what if machines were using us to evolve? No, really, what if machines were using us to evolve? Ah, it's not that funny, you guys, because in that case, then we humans would be the environmental background against which machines are evolving. And if we wanted to see what the future of machines would be like, we could ask, how is our human environment pushing machines to evolve? Well, first, we made physical work easier by inventing tools. Then we figured out how to power the machines so we didn't have to put in any physical effort. But then we invented the best machine of all, the computer. Maybe not this computer, but this was uh, one of the first personal computers, so I have it up, the Apple One. But the descendants of this guy are magic boxes that basically can run any kind of computer program to do almost anything. So now all we have to do is tell a program to run, and it does the whole job for us. So, yeah, we're lazy. And the primary motivation so far behind our creation and development of machines is to create slaves to take over our responsibilities. But, as things are now, we still need to tell the computer what we want. Nowadays, we're beginning to make it easier by starting to incorporate touch, <coughs> gesture, speech, and hopefully soon, uniting gesture and speech into natural conversation. Of course, some people are better at expressing themselves than others, uh, but it's easy for us all to think about what we want. And now, coming over the horizon is a technology which could eventually enable us to take lazy to a whole new level. <laughs> Brain-computer interfaces could eventually allow us to control computers just by thinking. Now, don't worry, this isn't real. But some people I know are not only think that a plug in the back of the neck is inevitable, they're looking forward to it. <laughs> After all, I mean, it's like going back to the womb, you know, a time, basically, when we were really sheltered in a space that was created especially to fulfill our needs and desires. We can become babies again. Oh, and it is seductive. <laughs> Sherry Turkle, in her latest book, Alone Together, she showed us that in our society today, we would much rather be in a safe space with our devices. I mean, I know I would at this particular moment, but yeah, she would much rather be, we would much rather be in a safe space with our devices than in a public space with the people who are right next to us. Because after all, those devices were created to fulfill our needs, but people, people have their own agendas. But, you know, here's the catch. By the time you invent a mach machines that can effortlessly figure out from the mess of thoughts and desires in our head uh, what they should do for us, they're probably complex enough to have agendas of their own. But we have an alternative. We don't have to let lazy rule. Let's take, for example, uh, computing controlled by thought. Um, Instead of making brain-computer interfaces which read our minds, we could instead use the same technology to show us what, is inside, what our inner life is like, basically. For example, using technology that exists now, we can measure, we can detect and measure the uh, level of tension that you feel toward another person. And we can take that information and we can make a mirror out of your computing device a mirror, though, of what's inside you. And once you can see so clearly how much stress you feel around that other person, you can take steps to change that feeling. And when, what you see in the mirror reflects whether you are actually changing that feeling. Pretty soon, you begin to realize that how that other person makes you feel is really how you feel about that other person. In other words, not an unchangeable reality, but just a belief you had that was holding you back. Brain-computer interface technology could be used to help us see our inner life so that we can begin to learn about what we truly desire, what we believe, what we love, what we fear. 
and we can begin to see about when our beliefs about how the world works are actually not all that grounded in reality. We can train ourselves to voluntarily attain states of mind which are helpful to us. We already have mind-controlled games on smartphones which you can use to help you learn to reduce stress or increase focus when you need to. Looking to the future, imagine how your life would change if, for example, you could get into the flow of creativity at will. And when we can see what is making us tick at a particular moment, and we have trained ourselves to move from negative to productive states of mind, we can start to intervene in those moments when our assumptions are triggering reactions which are really meant to protect us, but actually hold us back from becoming the people that we dream of becoming. How would the future of machines or of society change if we approached the development and consumption of all our technologies with the intent to help ourselves develop our inner capabilities of perception, morality, and creativity? Rather than what we're doing right now, which is basically to get to the point where our only job is to transmit impulses of desire, each new technology can take you down one of two paths. You can choose to use it to help you pretend that you're as powerful as you dream to be, or you can choose to use it to help you grow toward actually achieving your dreams. It's up to you. <laughs>